So for part two of the course, we're going to now start to segue to the big idea of let's target mobile devices. In part one, we were making a website. We made, we made a couple of web projects in part one. In part two, the big idea here is to learn what's the software, what do we need to do in order to now make mobile uh, projects, projects that actually are apps that people can download from the app stores and that they can actually pay you for 99 cents or more or give them away for free. So that's what the big idea of this class will be. I'm going to uh, talk in, in theory for a moment and then we will get into practice and actually do something. So let's go open up your web browser and let's go to the website developer.android.com developer.android.com I'm also going to open another window developer.apple.com another window developer.windows.com You spell it right, developer.windows.com. So, uh, developer.android.com, uh, developer.apple.com, and developer.microsoft.com. All three of these are the official portal to the big ecosystems on mobile and desktop. Android, obviously, are all of those Android devices, tablets. Uh, smartphones, uh, regular phones, Apple, of course, is uh, the um, iPhones, uh, iPads, and such. And uh, Windows is the Windows laptops and uh, the Surface and the phones and everything. So these are the three big platforms. And in all of these three portals, you would go and educate yourself, basically for free, to learn what do I need to know to make an app for this ecosystem, for this platform. So at developer.android, I would see I'm interested in making Android apps or apps for auto. And the latest version, Android 7, Nougat, is out. And what do I need to, to learn how to make? those kinds of apps. Well, I learn here, I read there. Developers console, all the documentation is here. This is divided up into design, develop, distribute. You have to design your, your project visually. It has to look nice for Android. You have to then develop. You have to write the code for it to work on that platform. And then distribute. You have to get it out to people uh, for free or pay. At the Apple portal, it's the same sort of thing. Discover, design, develop, distribute, support, account. So you're going to make, you're going to find all the info at the developer.apple.com site, uh, plus the software, the code, examples, tutorials, help, everything. And same thing over at Windows. Uh, the documentation is here, the downloads, samples, support. So these three websites are the manual for developing an app in all of the big platforms. The problem is that once you dig a, just a little bit deeper, it's going to say, okay, for Android, basically, let's uh, start to write some Java code to create your Android app. Then when you go over to Apple, nowadays they're going to say, okay, let's go ahead and start to write some Swift code to make your Apple app. Uh, traditionally, it was Objective-C. And then you go over to the Windows one, and you're like, and there it says, okay, now let's brush up and start to write some C-sharp code. Those are three different languages for each platform, four if you count Objective-C and Swift for Apple. But that's three different, complete, complex languages for each of the platforms, for each of the big platforms. Let's say, okay, forget it. I'm just going to focus on Android. Android has like 80% market share of mobile devices. Apple has about like 19, and Windows on mobile has about 
So you're going to say, okay, 80% market share, that's great. But actually, many developers oftentimes make more money on the Apple ecosystem. Now, whatever you want to say about Apple, uh, let's say you've got an Android device, you hate Apple, great. Let's say you're on an Apple device, you hate Android, great. Hate whoever you want. But you've got a platform, you love it, people use it. Lots and lots of people use these. But studies show that people seem to be more apt to spend on apps when they're on an Apple device. And you have never used an Apple device, and you're not going to, but a lot of people do. And there's a culture of, of Android a little bit more about open source, a little bit about more open, and in other words, a little bit more about free. So it seems that you might make a little bit less money as an Android developer as opposed to an Apple developer. And even though Windows has a very small market share on, on mobile, they do have, however, like 90% market share of every other kind of device. Desktops and laptops, uh, cloud computing and all of that. So even if you said, I'm only going to focus on Android, you're missing out on the other platforms. If you're going on, on, on Windows, you're missing on the other platforms. So the problem is, each one speaks their own language and each one has their own software. The great news, however, is the way I'm teaching this class is based on one common language, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And with what I'm going to show in this class, part two, we're going to be able to convert our web code into the code, the native code of every platform. Not just these, because we've also got you know, Amazon Kindle operating system, Firefox OS, uh, Ubuntu, etc. With what we're going to learn and set up in this class, we will be able to make an app for every device based on the same languages, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And all of that comes from the website Cordova.Apache. Org. Cordova is not the only project that'll, that tackles this, but it's the most famous. This project, an open source project backed by a bunch of companies and developers and people all over the world, saw the problem in the different languages, the fragmentation <coughs> that happened that uh, the three big platforms speak their own programming language. So this team here, this global team, said, let's see if we can develop some sort of tool, some sort of software, to be able to be the translators between all the languages. And they've succeeded pretty well. <coughs> there are more than one of these sorts of platforms out there. This is a big one. They've been around, I think, since 2011. So in internet time, that's a long time. And what they've done is create this software for free that we will be able to convert our projects to all the platforms. This is where we're going to spend our time. This is the documentation we're going to read. This is the software we're going to use. So even though you might see on your desktop, this is Android Studio. Let's make an Android app. I don't see the software here to make an Apple app. I don't see the software here to make a, a Windows app. But no matter, we're going to use the Cordova software mobile apps with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Target multiple platforms with one code base, free and open source. So we'll be able to target Android devices, Apple devices, Windows devices, and if you want 0% market share, BlackBerry devices. No, no joke, I just read an article like one or two weeks ago that says officially BlackBerries have 0% market share now. They're probably rounding down, you know, it's probably like 0 0.01, but they're probably rounding down. Yeah. They still exist? They still exist, yeah. Uh, and four more. So we can actually even target full um, uh, Ubuntu uh, apps, LG Web OS, uh, the operating system that never died, but people still love it, and Fire OS, that's Amazon's operating system version of Android, and then Firefox OS, which they just threw in the towel like four weeks ago. Of course, the big ones. One, two, three. Market share order. One, two, three. Popularity order, perhaps arguably. One, two, three. 
in various ways. But that's what uh, this class is going to focus on, using the various tools here. Uh, and the, there's good news and bad news of doing it this way. Uh, the good news is that, well, the bad news is that to get really to be the most cross-platform, we're going to need to know a little bit of command prompt uh, interface. Uh, we're going to need to type uh, commands rather than clicking a pretty button that says turn it into iPhone instead of clicking a button turn it into Android. We're going to need to type some commands in an old-school command prompt or a terminal. If you've never used one of those before it'll be a culture shock because we're used to clicking on this and dragging on this and right-clicking on that. There's going to be none of that. We're going to type Cordova build Android and it'll create the Android version of your project. We're going to type Cordova emulate iOS and it will uh, emulate the version of the project. There are um, variations of Cordova where it is a nice pretty interface. Microsoft themselves actually are at the forefront with Visual Studio, the latest Visual Studio. They're really embracing mobile uh, projects and with the new Visual Studio 2017 and 2015 it's building in Cordova into Visual Studio. It is like a 20 gigabyte download, uh, but with the latest versions of Visual Studio, you will be able to uh, target all the devices with a nice pretty interface, uh, a nice safe graphical user interface. But we're going to focus on the on the uh, command prompt version of it. It's just a lot faster. Once you learn like the five or six commands, once you memorize the commands, you just type them and it does it. You won't need to find the what's the right menu. Is it under the edit menu? Is it under the refactor menu? Where's that command? Well, you just memorize like six commands, literally type it and it does it a lot faster. There's less overhead. There's, there's no 20 gigabyte download required. So this goes on to tell you what's so great about it, and you will be able to access all of the features of the device. This device can take photos. This device understands orientation. This device understands accelerometer. Uh, it has a contacts. It can send text messages. It can dial phones. We will be able to access all of that with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, specifically JavaScript. We'll be able to type one JavaScript command, something like cordova.getCamera. And that will be translated into the appropriate Java command for Android, the appropriate Objective-C command for iOS, and the appropriate c -sharp command for Windows. But doing it via JavaScript, do, doing it via ways that a lot of you already have some experience. Definitely if you took month one, and a lot more if you took feud or other classes, this will be very familiar. Um, that was the bad news, that we're going to need to type uh, commands. Here's some quick examples. We'll do this in a moment. How do you set it up? Well, you need to type the command npm install dash g Cordova. Type it and type it where? Well, we'll figure all of that out in a moment. And then Cordova create my app. Again, where do I type this? We will see. It creates an app, and then Cordova Platform Add, and you add platforms, and then eventually Cordova Run Browser, or Run Android, or Run iOS, and it'll run your app. It'll compile, it'll crunch your app. Uh, the, the web languages and convert the code, basically, to the right platform, all behind the scenes. You don't need to learn Java, Objective-C, or C-sharp. You just stick with these web languages and it'll do the fancy stuff behind the scenes. <coughs> you look at the documentation in detail, and here it says, okay, if you really want uh, a nice interface, uh, Adobe got into this game as well. They have their own app with a nice interface, which I believe is still kind of rough around the edges last time I used it, but they have their own graphical interface where you just click and drag and, and click commands and such. 
Ionic is an up-and-coming version, getting more popular. Manaka is a cool one related to onsen that I've used also. I like those. Taco is a good one, but unfortunately that one seems to be unofficially being retired. And Visual Studio is Microsoft's big attempt at it, spending millions of dollars to get their foothold in this. So it's a big popular project. Oh, and then Intel has their own version, XDK. Haven't used that one in a little while, but it's pretty good. Cocoon, never used it. Framework 7, never used it. App Builder, don't know it. Gap Debug, don't know it. Telerik, don't know it. So everyone's got their version because this is open source. So people make their own version better than the competition. Some of them rise, some of them fall. We're going straight to the original project. Examples of real apps that you can download right now made in Cordova, made via Cordova. Resources, etc. Issues, the licenses, and follow on Twitter, etc. So this is going to be the big secret for this class, how to be cross-platform. We use Cordova, which will rewrite our code to all the platforms. Excited yet? Questions so far? So the good news of it all was that we're going to reuse our existing knowledge uh, to target all the platforms. One like more. Like that one will be translate to like Apple language. Yes. Like, to the suite. Exactly. Okay. If the suite developer like wanted to check out your app, that's he will be know that it's been like built not on the suite. If someone else wanted to look at your code to yeah. work on it, you're saying? Um, it, they wouldn't be able to really work on your code because if they expect a Swift project, it will not be a Swift project. It'll be an mm -hmm. HTML project. Uh, this will convert the code into the right language, but it's it doesn't kind of like unconvert it. Okay. So it's still the original HTML. Like if you want to tweak or like change something, you have to change in your HTML CSS and JavaScript. And convert again. Yes, compile it again. But if you open Swift, you can do no. anything. Well, I shouldn't say no completely. The documentation does show that you can actually open what Cordova creates in Swift or Xcode or blocked. Visual Studio. It's not not blocked or locked, but it might not be fully, completely edit editable in those um, SDKs. And so uh, the other little bit of bad news is that this, and I'm blaming Apple for this, if you want to create an iOS project, um, traditionally you open up your MacBook or your get your iMac and get the software Xcode or the new Swift um, and write your code and compile it on a Mac. Cordova still will convert your code, but on a Mac. What kind of computers do we have in this room? Not Macs. So we're going to need to focus in this class on the Android platform, because you have an iPhone and we can plug it into Windows, but Apple has made it that you just cannot compile it to run on a, on a Windows device unless you do virtual device, uh, virtu uh, virtual machines or uh, you know, multi-boot loading and all that complex stuff that we're not going to get into. If you know what that means, try it. But here, we've got Windows computers. These have been set up to publish to Android. It's, they're not also, we didn't, I didn't also set up the computers to publish to Windows because then that would kind of set up even more overhead for these computers. So the bad news is that we're going to focus on, on Android development, but everything that we're doing, when you then open it up on your Mac, you can have Cordova run iOS. We just we can't do it on a Windows computer. You can bring your own Mac, and you can do the stuff we're doing here on your own Mac. And you will be able to then target iOS and Android, but not Windows. You have to have a Windows machine to make a Windows app. Android's the only one that's fully cross-platform. With Android, you can compile on a Windows machine, you can compile on a Mac machine, you can compile on a Linux machine. Apple, you have to compile it on a Mac. And Windows, 
apps, you have to compile them on Windows. The good news, though, is I have nine uh, school-issued uh, Android tablets. So if you want to fully test your projects on a real hardware, uh, I can check out in class a real device, Android, for you to plug in and see your real app on a real device. If you don't have your own Android device, you will have virtual devices. You will have a mini Android device running on your computer to test it. But testing really works best when it's on real hardware. And I've got nine tablets that I can check out if you would like to test. If you have your own Android device, we can use it. We're not going to jailbreak it. We're not going to alter the bootloader or any fancy stuff. We will be able to sideload apps onto your Android device to test your projects. If you have iOS, again, can't do it. Blame Apple. You need a real Mac hardware to run your iOS projects through Cordova. We're still using Cordova, but it's got to run on a, on a Mac device. How many of you brought um, any device to work with today? How many of you brought your cable? You don't need your cable just yet, but you need your cable next time, and you need an Android device. If you don't, we have the virtual devices, which we will see, and we can check out a device. Any general questions at this point? Bring in older Androids, like 2.x? I think you can, uh, we can manage with at least 2.2. Yeah, so if you've got an older Android device, yeah. bring it in and we can, we should be able to use it. Almost an expendable mm -hmm. device. So. Yeah. I have, personally, I have my own, which I forgot in the car, but I have my own Android device. I've got one of all of them, actually, because I do a lot of this stuff, but I've got uh, an, uh, an Android device that I use as my regular device, and I went off to Best Buy, and I bought this one for $40. This is the Motorola Moto uh, GE or something, the Motorola Moto E. It was $40, no contract, prepaid. Uh, I, don't, I have AT&T. This runs Verizon. I don't have Verizon. I don't care. I run Wi-Fi if I need. But I have, you know, this capable, inexpensive phone that I use only for mm. development on Android. And you can go to Target. You can go to Best Buy. You can go to Fry's. And you know, I don't work for them, but I do recommend the Moto E. Look at that. They've got it for $29 now at Freedom Pop. 19 on eBay. That one must be dipped in gold for 129. But uh, any one of these, Moto E is the little brother. Moto G is the good one. I mean the the big brother. But the Moto E for just development purposes, um, it's a pretty good device. It's got the camera and everything it needs. This is what I use to to test in these classes. making these apps that we can make in the class. So go off and look and or use your own main phone. We're not going to void the warranty or jailbreak it or anything like that on your, on your main phone. You don't have to worry about it, but I would prefer to have a separate device just for testing. Uh, plain old USB cable. Um, just to connect to the computer to transfer our app onto the device. They don't make it so that you can do it over the air yet, really. You need to plug in. Yes? Um, so with virtual devices versus real devices, can you share with you some of the differences? Definitely. So for example, on virtual devices, we will be able to uh, interact with our app really well and and see pretty much all of its features. But some of the features that a real device have, for example, are GPS. Our desktop computers often don't have very good GPS capabilities, so you'll get weird readings. Now, a bigger example also is, uh, let's say you need to program haptic feedback, which is a fancy way of saying vibration. These computers don't vibrate, so you won't see that. So some of the, the physical aspects of testing are a little harder to test. You know, just rotation like that, 
Uh, you can test that on a virtual device, but this definitely, you know, is like real testing on real hardware. The animation happening on it, or the sound, or this other stuff, that should be no problem. What I do like also about virtual devices is that um, I want to test my project on multiple devices. I happen to have this size. I need to test on a tablet. I don't have a tablet. I can make a virtual device to test on tablets. Or you can borrow one from the class. <coughs> so most people, as I've, I've taught this class, I think it's four years now, for four years, and uh, people uh, come in with a variety of devices, older or newer Android devices, and they work fine. Sometimes when you come in with some of these like no-name brand Android devices, it doesn't quite work, like Pantech and uh, ZTE, and uh, I guess Huawei is getting better, but that one used to be bad. But if you've got an LG or a Motorola or a Samsung, those should work pretty well. Any of these really, really cheap ones, your mileage varies, and sometimes it just doesn't work. The device is too altered from the original Android code, or it's uh, too old, or the RAM isn't so good, but we have options. What I want to do is um, show you first, like just jump right in head first to kind of see how this works to lose our fear because we're going to need to type some commands and such. I'm going to have handouts for you. I'm putting the finishing touches on them because the software changes, but I'm going to have handouts for you that spell all of this out. But for today, we'll kind of do it freestyle for a moment. And our general process is uh, we're going to need to follow these, these sorts of steps. So 